So, you want to be a Digimon champion? Well, you're in luck. Zathorn, Fleegan First, and many others are working to make that into a reality. With the next Zathornament right around the corner, it's up to me to tell you how to enter. We'll be using the 11th as our example, as it's the next in line after this video, and uh, the entry period is open as of this one's drop. So, let's cover the five W's. Who? We want you. We want you to enter this tournament, so you are in fight of it. What? Digimon World 1 has a two-player mode. It's automatic cinematic, and yeah, that just means that you have to put in your entry, and we'll take care of the rest. Just tune in, see how you do. Where? Twitch.tv slash Live. It's uh, linked in the description, and it's going to be printed on the screen, like, right around here. You'll be hosting the main stream with all of the other co-hosts' screen, but if you want to see your individual bracket, it'll be in an individual host thing, and we'll talk about that maybe later. When? It's going to be Saturday, April 27th. Why? Why not? Before we begin, let's shout out the event organizers and the official community Discord. So... First, the organizers and the people who've done work. Clixus, Dio, Sid Montague, Yumi Svelte, Fleegan First, and Zathorn himself. They do so much work for us, and it's just amazing. Next, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a computer with an internet web browser for the web tool, made by Fleegan First, to create your entry, and then you're also going to need Discord to submit your entry. Um, you'll also need it, like I said with the event discord earlier, to stay up to date with the community and be up with the community notes. This upcoming tournament is going to be a free cup, meaning there's not going to be a restriction on Digimon. And that's about it for now, but next we're moving into the... Stats. There's going to be a stat limit of 4,000 points for the 11th Zathornament. Points and other, like, cup rules will vary, so there may be other weird restrictions or higher or lower limits, but we'll get to those in another video. Offense, defense, speed, and brains are the stat points, and they're 1 to 1 related. And then we've got HP and MP, which are 10 to 1 related, meaning that they're going to be about, like, you know, 10 points for 1 point towards the limit, or 1 to 1 with the limit. Uh, you must have at least 50 points in each stat, and speed and brains are correlated 2 to 1, which means that for every 2 point in speed, you must have 1 point in brains. That means, like, if you have a 300 speed, you've got to have about 150 brains, and that's the basics of building a Digimon for whenever it comes to, like, stats, except for, like, some stat penalties, but we'll talk about those more whenever we talk about them moves. You must have three moves on your Digimon or you'll incur a penalty of 400 required points to the brain stat, and you wouldn't be able to equip a buff move. We'll talk more about buffs in just a little bit, but for right now, let's stick to the moves. Status effects are semi-restricted. You can only have two moves with a status effect out of your three required or two with 400 point penalty, and poison must be used with itself. Uh, the other status effects can be used in whatever combination you want. There are also special restrictions on certain moves. These are some of the most powerful moves in the game power-wise and or stat percentage-wise. So you just kind of need to trim them down a bit and give them the extra stuff. These change with the stat limit points, just like the 400 penalty. But uh, that's with whatever tournament, keep up to date on the Discord, etc. Then we've got buffs, buffs being the moves that give you uh, bonuses to your stats. So they're here, they are tied to the brain stat. The more brain stat you have, the more times you get to use them. And then we have to restrict them because they are very powerful in the game. If you've been following along with the guide so far and you've been just having fun with it, you should have an entry in the web tool right now. So what you want to do is if the get entry button is highlighted, well, that might be a trap. Sometimes that doesn't work. We'll get to the issues later, but what you want to do is go to the URL bar, copy the URL, paste it in a private message to Zathorin on Discord, and send it in. That's it. Entry period for the latest Zathornament started on the 15th, and it's continuing on till the 22nd. The Zathornament is on the 27th, so we have the time. If you're going to be late in dropping an entry, 
make sure that you message Zethorin early so that he knows that you're interested and so that he can reserve a spot and contact other streamers who may be able to host your bracket. That's about it. Uh, let's talk about the web tool just for a little bit. It's made by Fleegan first, and it's a labor of love. It's going to be right on like 99% of the time you're going to be using it. It's going to be fine, but it is maintained by like one or two people. So bear with it for new patches or other things. There may be like a little hinky thing. So Zathorn and Fleegan first might contact you about your entry or if there's any like massive problems make sure that you message them on Discord for anything, really. They will be generally warm and friendly to you and help you with any, like, thing that you may need for the tool or your entry. So, with the exception of Overstat, which is a variable rule, but will be an effect for the 11th Zeth Ornament, that's it. I hope you guys have fun. With the competitions, I hope you all tune in. I'm going to be hosting one of the brackets, and it's going to be a really fun time. And as my end screen will say, stay phenomenal. <laughs>